Governor Sinoff, Indiana became the first state to ban most abortions since the Supreme Court overturned Roe. It is a major setback for reproductive care in Indiana and a major sign that Republicans will continue ignoring what happened this past Tuesday in Kansas. That deep red state sending a political shockwave across the nation, overwhelmingly rejecting an amendment to remove the right to abortion access from the state's constitution. With me now, MSNBC contributor and NYU law professor Melissa Murray, Judith Brown Dianis, executive director of the Advancement Project National Office, and Olivia Giuliana, political strategy coordinator for Gen Z for Change. It is good to see you all, Melissa. I want to start with you. Insider reports, quote, while Kansas was the first state to put the issue directly before voters, it won't be the last. November, Kentucky will, ha will vote on a similar measure that rejects the right to an abortion. And two blue states, California and Vermont, will vote on amendments to enshrine the right to abortion in their state's constitutions. Melissa, how important are these ballot initiatives as states start to follow Indiana's lead by passing new abortion restrictions? Thanks for having me, Alicia. Um, I think it's critically important that we have these voter initiatives, voter referendums that bring the prospect of direct democracy to this issue because as we see in Indiana, when these issues are put to representative democracy, these state legislatures that have become Republican controlled by design through decades of partisan gerrymandering, we see very different outcomes. What we saw in Kansas is that even though individuals in that very ruby red state may differ on the question of abortion and morality, they have real skepticism about the prospect of the state making such an important mm -hmm. decision and indeed consigning children to bear children. And so that really is a major, I think, distinction here. Um, when we have representative government, we get draconian bans like this, in part because of the way this democracy has been hobbled by gerrymandering, by voter suppression. When we take it directly to the people, we may have very different outcomes. Yeah, I mean, Judith, Politico describes the Kansas vote as a political earthquake. What are the lessons you think Democrats need to take away from Tuesday's vote protecting reproductive freedom? Well, Alicia, I, I hope they take away the lessons um, that really what has happened is that for Republicans, the contradictions are coming home to roost, that in fact their, their party and people in their party do not understand how you can say that you're about the party of freedom and liberty, yet you do not give freedom to women over decisions about their own bodies. And so for Democrats, this means that it is time for them to uh, really take the bull by the horns and use this as an issue, not only because it's politically the right thing to do, but because for women it is the right thing to do. And so um, they really were kind of downplaying this for the midterms, but now I think that is going to turn around. Yeah, Olivia, I, I want your take on the same. We have new reporting from The Hill that reads, quote, abortion is among the top issues for young voters, with many seeing it as a motivating factor in turning out to vote in the upcoming midterm elections. New survey data released by progressive polling firm Data for Progress found that among voters under the age of 45, 82 percent consider abortion rights to be an important issue in deciding how they vote. This demographic of young Americans has spent their entire lives under the protections of Roe versus Wade until six weeks ago when the U.S. Supreme Court ruled to overturn Roe. I mean, I don't need to tell you, Olivia, because you are an organizer yourself, midterms generally challenging uh, for youth voter turnout. There are a number of reasons for that. I wonder, one, if you think this is going to motivate young voters to go out and vote this November, and also if what we're looking at is really a long tail here, right? Where, where young voters who we know have been traditionally progressive on a number of issues are now going to even further align with Democrats as a reaction to what they have seen from the Supreme Court built by Republicans. Yeah, I mean, this is undoubtedly going to be a huge motivating factor for young people going into the midterms elections. We've seen in the last few election cycles that young people have registered to vote and gone out and vote at a higher rate than before. Just in 2020, we saw an 11 point increase in people ages 18 to 24 getting registered and going out to vote. And 65% of those voters voted for Joe Biden in the presidential election. Um, we saw in Kansas recently with the amendment and protections of abortion access 
analysis that a lot of the people who were voting in that election are first time voters. So going into this, I think that we're going to see not only a stark increase in the amount of people who are first time voters and the amount of young voters in general, but I think that this is a real uniting moment for the Democratic Party, regardless of if you are a center moderate or if you are a progressive, because this is an issue that regardless of your political affiliation or how far left or how far right you are, you are voting for basic rights to freedom and basic rights to privacy. Yeah, Melissa, my colleague Ali Vell, she sat down with a group of abortion providers and activists in Alabama, and here's what one doctor had to say about the state's new restrictions. Take a listen. Your state does have some exceptions, um, I believe, for the health of the mother for abortion. Mm -hmm. What does that Is mean? She well, what, you tell me. You're the doctor. Uh, we've What's asked. That? We don't have. We don't have an Nobody answer. Would tell us. I would tell you several things. Right. But I understand that my interpretation of medicine is not applicable to the law. I, Melissa, should it be on doctors to be interpreting legal doctrine? Well, let me just say, Alicia, this landscape where doctors really don't have any understanding of where their medical judgment ends and the law begins is exactly what we had in the period preceding Roe versus Wade. And indeed, the effort to liberalize abortion laws in the 1960s was led by doctors who objected to the idea of legislatures making these decisions in their stead. And so what we have now are doctors who don't know what they are permitted to do, patients who don't know what they're permitted to seek, and it is a landscape of chaos and confusion by design because that chaos is as effective as deterring individuals from seeking an abortion as an outright ban. Olivia, a few weeks ago, Congressman Matt Gates attacked you on Twitter. You fundraised off of what could at best be called his immaturity. You raised more than $2 million for Gen Z for Choice Abortion Fund. Talk to us about how that money is going to help people seek reproductive freedom. Yeah, the funds are going to be split amongst 50 abortion funds from across the country in states like Ohio, Florida, and it's going to places where there are a lot of people who are having to travel to get abortion services. So it's going to help them get access to those services, whether it be going to a clinic in their own state or having to go to a different state to get access. Um, so it's going to a number of different organizations, including Indigenous Women's Rising, to help people get access to not just abortion services that they need, but other reproductive health care services that we're starting to see targeted by the GOP as well, including access to contraceptives. Melissa, Olivia, thank you both so much for your time. Judith, you are sticking with me because next, new reports that Trump's own legal team is talking to federal prosecutors, how the big lie still lives and is now